Smith's story, including the polygamy story, the official version by the church, people wonder how the saints actually believe that. Well, understanding the techniques of coercive persuasion, behavior and information control, as well as persuasive speech, we're going to watch this video done by Mormon Girl and watch the technique she uses. Okay, so basically when we've fact-checked uh, the what the church's story is on polygamy, we've basically destroyed it by looking at primary source documents and seeing that it's not at all like we're told on LDS.org or in the correlated church manuals, lesson manuals. But here we're going to take a look at Mormon Girl Next Door using persuasion techniques to help us actually believe a story that is provably false. So let's kind of dissect that and, and see how it is that we wind up believing things that are basically unbelievable. Now, if you're one of those people who is apprehensive about the subject of polygamy, like maybe you don't understand it, you don't approve of it, uh, to be honest, you are not alone. There are many people, both inside and outside the church, who don't quite understand polygamy and are not comfortable with it. Okay, number one, you're just like me. That's a common technique to use, because we believe people that are just like us. We're not alone. She's like us. She's believable. Now she'll continue and present some easily verifiable facts so we know that she's believable. I'll be honest with you, this is not one of my favorite subjects uh, to talk about because I just don't like the subject all that much, but I've seen so many misconceptions about polygamy regarding the LDS Church that I knew it was important that I post a video about it. So she's just doing her duty, and her body language is saying that she believes what she says. So, here we go. Um, the shortest way to describe the LDS Church and the practice of polygamy is by saying this. Yes, we did, and no, we don't. Okay? So let's go to the church history. Um, in the 1800s, polygamy was practiced in the LDS Church because of what Mormons believe was a revelation given to the prophet Joseph Smith at the time. Using the picture of the Moroni visiting Joseph Smith alone in a private room in a private bed is typical of the deception that we have in the lesson materials and in the missionary lessons. We know that he shared his bedroom with four brothers and there were only two beds. So the shh, Moroni, my brothers are sleeping joke is uh, applicable to this picture. And thus we see the typical, you know, conscious deception that is used in the storytelling that we receive from the church's materials. Now, it's interesting to note that in biblical times, polygamy was permitted to be practiced during some times, like with uh, Abraham or Jacob, but then in other times, it was not permitted, like in the New Testament days. But there really is no official reason um, that is described in the Bible, so we kind of take it on faith. Now, similarly, during... The only thing that I recall in the Bible regarding, well, we've got thou shalt not commit adultery, okay... And then we've got examples, as she said. So she's saying it's permitted because people that are supposed to be keeping the commandments, these patriarchs, uh, are pa practicing, you know, plural marriage and, and concubinage with slaves of their wives. So, okay, I see that. Now she says it wasn't permitted in the New Testament. So Jesus, who supposedly was the God of the Old Testament, in Mormon theology uh, has what changed his mind and now he's not okay with that and maybe she doesn't know that James Talmadge taught and I believe it's in Jesus the Christ that Jesus was in fact a polygamist and the marriage at Cana was you know wedding at Cana was his marriage and he was fulfilling the uh, the duties of the bridegroom there when he when he was supplying the wine albeit by the miracle of turning water to wine and then um, 
he was married, according to Talmadge, I believe, to Mary, Mary, and Martha. So, she's probably been reading too many correlated lesson materials herself. And what about Jesus changing his mind? I thought God was supposed to be unchangeable and all knowledgeable and all those sort of things. The Book of Mormon says so anyway. Of course, the Book of Mormon also says that Jesus Christ is the very eternal Father. 18th century, for about a 50 year period, Mormons believe God commanded some Mormons to practice polygamy. And Only those that wanted to be gods in the celestial kingdom. Otherwise, you're damned if you don't practice the doctrine, according to Brigham. And section 132 pretty much says that if it's been revealed to you. There are three reasons given specifically for that. Um, the first reason was an ancient practice needed to be restored in order to fulfill a prophecy. So that was the first reason given. The second reason was that God wanted to help jumpstart membership in the LDS church. Those are pretty good ones. He wanted to restore something that we don't have any record of ever being commanded. And he wanted to jumpstart the LDS church, like have Brigham Young have 60 children from 50 two wives or something. So he's having about one and a quarter child, children per wife. So that's jump starting the church all right when there's plenty of other guys who could have been happily having seven children apiece. But we did that in another video. And then our last point of course is that God just wants to get women into the celestial kingdom. He's, uh, he's the founder of uh, the Celestial Association for the Advancement of Women because women need to get there and there aren't enough worthy men so you know you just well then why would he discontinue polygamy if that's always the case or maybe there's just more righteous men right now than there were at the beginning of the church she doesn't try to figure that one out too hard so she's using this data to convince us that mormons aren't polygamists which is fine if she believes that no one else but the salt lake church has the right to call themselves mormon uh, which is basically the stance of the church. It, the others are all part of the Church of the Devil, according to First Nephi, and so they don't deserve to be called a name that isn't even the church's name, it's just a nickname, but they can't call themselves Mormon. So, as far as the real concern for Mormons, this is just fluff, because we're concerned about is Jesus Christ an all-knowing, unchanging, uh, honest God guiding the church? And do his servants tell the truth? Did Joseph Smith tell the truth? We've covered that. Uh, does he keep his marriage covenants? We've covered that. Uh, are they truthful on LDS.org? We've shown that in other videos that they're following the same pattern of deceit. So this is just fluff. Before I close, I wanted to also address that I... Okay, so we see she's been really honest. Um, <clears throat> admitting that Mormons did practice polygamy although it's just a common misconception now we shouldn't even be linked to polygamy as Mormons and those are all fake Mormons that practice it now they've been cleansed from the church now what about Joseph Smith and the haters that spread lies about him maybe they're anti-Mormons I think anti-Mormons I a few messages from people with a little bit of hateful terminology, I'll, I'll even say, saying that Joseph Smith, who Mormons believe was a prophet, um, was a sex-crazed scumbag who just wanted to marry a bunch of women in order to have sex with all these women. Now, um, I looked into this claim, as well as other people, other authors and such, to find out what the truth is, because, let's be honest, none of us, the critics or us Mormons, were alive during the times of Joseph Smith, so we can go back to the records. And the evidence, as I've read and as other people have read, shows quite the opposite. In fact, new evidence has come out recently, and I'll include links in the video description, showing that Joseph Smith was more of a reluctant polygamist. Okay, well, she uses great technique. She's likable and believable. She's done things to enhance that uh, earlier, as we saw. And then she takes that and tells us that these people speaking... Uh, their evidence against Joseph Smith are hateful and that's a tough word for her to say being such a nice girl but you know these people are just hateful they must be haters therefore we shouldn't believe them but uh, you know who is saying that well 
wives of the apostles, for instance, and several of the apostles, and two of the three witnesses, both called him an adulterer, his wife, who saw him, you know, in the barn with the orphan girl that was staying at their house, Fanny Alger, 16-year-old, that he got him, you know, got pregnant, and uh, Emma kicked her out of the house, you know, pregnant. So, you know, her, her, her evidence, she shows us, what, a picture of a letter, doesn't even read it, but is it going to disprove all those things? Were the apostles' wives all lying? I mean, the church even admits that he was, uh, they call him married, to several of these women who were married to other fellows, including, you know, Orson Hyde's wife, an apostle. So, come on. William Law's wife, Rigdon's daughter that he went for, you know, Orson Pratt's wife, Sarah, who rebuffed him, saying he said he was like Law's wife. He had a revelation. When her husband's gone, she's supposed to be a spiritual wife and let him in and hope she won't re repulse him or deny him. Give me a break. So, we've seen that Mormon girl has used wonderful technique here in the course of this video to make herself very believable. She looks believable. She acts like she's just like us, so subconsciously we want to believe her. She's got body language that tends to show that she actually does seem to believe what she's saying. She started off giving us things that we could fact check and find out were true, like Mormons don't pr practice you know, polygamy in this life anymore, at least. Um, and then gave us church statistics and you know all sorts of things like that, which really weren't pertinent to the concern of whether Jesus is guiding the church. Of course, she's concerned with clearing things up about people believing that members of the LDS church practice polygamy. We went over all that. But then she takes this credibility and, and uses it along with her personality and then the name calling, labeling people haters or calling, saying their language was hateful, who suggested that Joseph Smith uh, might have been motivated by anything by than the most holy cause for the practices that he was involved with. So in, that's a typical uh, technique for neutralizing the opposition, destroying the credibility of, of those speaking out against uh, the organization, which is what LDS apologists do. They use character assassination tactics like Dan Peterson uses. So now she's going to step in and, and use that same technique with polyandry. And she's given us some references, but it's all going to be apologetic, you know, the same line of garbage that we get every single time. And the approach that she used, she, she showed us the picture of a letter, but she didn't read the contents, and it was impossible for that to disprove the testimonies of, you know, Emma Smith and the many wives of the apostles that testified that Joseph Smith, you know, came after them at night, and in fact, we know that, the, of course, that the church has on record that he's supposedly married to Orson Pratt's wife, not Orson Pratt, Orson Hyde's wife, so, and many other married women, so it's kind of ridiculous to say that the ones that didn't you know, invite him into the bedroom are all liars, and the ones that did, well, you know, it was God's commandment, right? Okay, let's check her out again here. He genuinely cared about mankind. He wasn't this sex-crazed maniac like people say, according to the evidence. So if you have that opinion of Joseph Smith being this scumbag, I challenge you to click on the links that I've included in the video description, uh, do the research, and read the documentation that was written by those who knew him. Um, and then decide for yourself what that documentation means, because if you want to take a deeper dive into the subject of polygamy, including the subject of polyamory, which is another subject that is filled with misconceptions and falsehoods. In the end, you got to differentiate between facts and persuasive talk. If we look at Joseph Smith's record, what he told the truth about, what he can, we can verify he didn't, that makes it easier. And look at our 100% Jesus Proves the Scriptures video and see what that says.